Right, so this is Election 360. The Ghana Police Service says an intelligence-led operation is currently underway to find and apprehend some individuals who engaged in violent conduct over the weekend. Supporters of the two leading parties clashed during a walk resulting in injuries to at least nine people. What began as a routine campaign event for both the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, and the New Patriotic Party's MPP supporters took a violent turn in Newtown as a clash between the two political groups left two people shot with several others injured. The confrontation occurred near the Mamobi markets when riders from the NDC encountered MPP supporters on their way back. Tensions flared, leading to an exchange of blows and gunfire. <laughs> Two people were shot, including one who was hit by a stray bullet. Six others sustained injuries and are receiving treatment at the police hospital and the Mamobi General Hospital. We were coming and we saw them passing by and we stopped for them. So we wait for them to pass away and then we followed them out. There was space. We just saw that the guys just turned, about 10 of them or 15 of them, they just turned and then faced us and three of them pushed one of our motorbikes down. And our guys asked them now, why did they do that? And one of the guys took out jackknife. So the, the other guy that took the jackknife and our colleagues were saying they put the jackknife down. By the time that we realized, stop! People just put out gun. He just shot me three times. Member of Parliament for Yas North, Yusif Jaja, share the NDC side of what led to the clash. We usually have our weekly walk uh, between an NDC and NPP. We've been demarcated as our route every week. You know, the constituency comprises of Mamobi and um, Accra Newtown, traditionally, that's Iowa so North. So this week, we are for Iowa, um, Accra Newtown. We've gone to Accra Newtown on our way back. We have these riders who normally ride within the constituency all over. I'm told the road, they, they were riding and got to Mamobi where they met the MPP people from behind. So they were just waiting for them to move so that they would also uh, move. All of a sudden, they came back and attacked them. That's how come the whole incident started. The police have since stepped in and investigations are underway to determine the cause of the clash. Leaders from both parties have been urged to calm their supporters and work together to prevent further violence. We do work each and every week, and this week is so unfortunate. You understand that has happened, and it wasn't the fault of uh, whoever, because each and every week we have where we're supposed to go, the other part also they have where they're supposed to pass. Everybody has its own roots, but this week it seems some of them these people. Yeah, With elections approaching, tensions between political parties are rising, and there are concerns that more confrontations may occur. Authorities are urging calm and dialogue as the country gears up for the polls. Imamul Samani, TV3 News, Mamobi, Accra. And uh, on the issues of political violence, the Institute of Democratic Governance, IDEG, has warned that this coming election could be volatile and that security agencies and all the stakeholders, particularly the parties, need to pay particular attention to how they go out to campaign. We'll try and get some security perspectives on this particular issue for you. For now, though, it is time for Constituency Watch. Right, so we start uh, our constituency watch series from the Okaikoi North constituency in the Greater Accra region. Now, this constituency is ordinarily won by the New Patriotic Party. The NDC, however, currently holds the seat with a sitting member of parliament who had moved from the Ekropon constituency to challenge the seat. Let me bring in Joseph Akable, my colleague who has joined us in studio to try and bring us some better analysis or perspective to the specific constituency we are looking at, which is the Okaikwe North constituency. All right, Joseph, good morning. Thank you for joining us on Election 360. Okaikwe North, Greater Accra Region, so help us understand the dynamics that go into it. I mean, typically it's an MPP constituency like you did indicate, and the data that we have here for our viewers, it shows that since 1996, the MPP has won the seat in terms of the presidential election they've won seven times with the NDC yet to win since 1996. 
but uh, it's, the interesting aspect of it is that for the election 2020, it was settled with a vote difference of just 236. Mm. And so a typical MPP seat, but for the first time, you have that close gap yeah. between the MPP and the NDC. So that makes it quite interesting there. In terms of the parliamentary situation, it looks a bit different. The MPP, they've picked a seat five times with the NDC winning twice. That is for 2004 and 2020. Then the 2020 elections comes with also another very interesting dynamic that changes the game altogether. So this is what is going to happen this year. You have two individuals contesting in Okaikwe North. There is Teresa Ladiawini, who is the current member of parliament for the area representing the NDC as its candidate, coming up against Nana Amadoke Siyama. She's the current member of parliament for Equiapim North. And so you recall it's her area that she decided not to contest this time around. And you know that the MPP's candidate for that particular area will be Sami Oko this time around. Right. So she didn't contest the parliamentary primaries at Equiapim. She came down and contested here at Okaikwe North and was elected as a party's candidate. And so you have two members of parliament for the first time contesting mm. in that particular constituency. Mm. It becomes keen because first and foremost, typically an M MPP seat, if you go back again and look at the data, you see typically it's an MPP seat, mm. but the NDC has the seat going into the 2024 elections. And with a member of parliament coming in, the MPP believes that it is time to take Okaikwe back from them. But the other interesting worrying aspect for the presidential is the fact that the NDC believes it can close the gap because if the, the election was settled by a difference of 236, then the point they make is that, look, this is something that they can also snatch by way of the presidential results from uh, the governing New Patriotic Party. Right, and uh, let's go to the candidates that are contesting. So I'm uh, also quite interested in knowing. So this is the first time for Theresa Ladia winning. Yes. She's the first time MP for yeah. the constituency. Yeah. And she has a relatively new person yeah. on the ticket of the MPP. Yeah. So it's an all-female, but it's likely that any of them could go through yeah. based on the fact that this is the first time. She could be lucky to get a second nod yeah. or maybe not. And if it doesn't go her way, it's definitely going to be the MPP. Seat. Absolutely. In and fact, it's already been very controversial. I mean, the, the matter even went to court about the eligibility of Nanama Dukwe Siyama to even contest. And she was cleared by the court eventually because the concern was raised that she's not ordinarily resident in that area. Right. But that matter was settled and she was cleared to contest. And so she will be coming up. So two members of parliament, both in parliament, <laughs> but uh, from different constituencies and now contesting for one constituency. Very interesting. We'll be looking forward to that. All right. So for those of you in the constituency, this is live. Do let us know what your thoughts are on what exactly will be informing whom you would be voting for, the two candidates of the leading parties, which of them uh, will be taking your votes. My colleague Safua Bwahin was in the constituency uh, a few days ago to gauge the mood ahead of the polls and has come through with this report. So currently I am at the Okaikwe North constituency, specifically at Chimota Abofu. Okaikwe North constituency is a heterogeneous mixture of both the middle class as well as the low. And I have been engaging with the residents so far. They tell me a lot of the challenges they're going through. They have spoken about their bad roads, drainage systems, water problems, as well as their public toilet. And right behind me is one of the public toilets. They said have been closed for over more than a year now. And the community members are only resorting into just one of the public toilets in the community. The toilet facility in Abufu has been closed, so people defecate in the drains. The stench is unbearable. Our roads and toilets are our biggest problems. This simple road can be fixed as well as our gutters. Yeah, your Teresa Awuni. Our MP in this constituency is Teresa Awuni. She promised she will fix the road when she is voted into power, but nothing has been done since she came. 
The Okaiku North constituency boosts a population of 309,768, with females making up 51.9%, slightly higher than the 48.4% male population. Known for its high voter turnout, the constituency had over 79,641 registered voters in the 2020 election. Traditionally a stronghold for the NPP, the 2020 parliamentary election marked a historic shift as the NDC, represented by Theresa Ladi Awoni, won with 51.07% of the votes, narrowly defeating the NPP's Fuseni Issa, who secured 47.52%. Despite the NDC currently holding power, can they sustain their momentum in this year's election amid the growing concerns and comments from the constituents? For the residents, they are highly confident in who they are voting for to come in as a member of parliament for the constituency. And for them, it is unwavering. I don't know why we should vote for an MP who said she has used our common fund to buy kebab for our parents, which is false. We will vote for an empathetic and considerable person. The MP in this constituency doesn't put in much effort at all, and that is why we would vote for Dakwa to fix our roads for us. There were others who also held different opinion on the performance of the incumbent member of parliament. Our MP, Teresa Awini, has given out her best, even though her government is not in power. The president any power now so they are not famous with me i know oh yeah amidst the numerous challenges faced by the populace they pointed out the non-functional street lights which are posing significant security threats to community members the street lights and so you are there our street light is one of our problems our phones and bags are snatched and you are beaten for not having any money on you as a woman TV3 News, Okaikwe North Constituency. Right, so that's a quick snap of what's been happening in the Okaikwe North Constituency. So here on Election 360, we could be coming to your constituency next. You might want to pay attention. We are swinging straight to the Volta region. We are going specifically to the Keta constituency where the National Democratic Congress is cautioning its members against a skirt and blouse campaign and voting ahead of the December 7 elections. As the election campaign heats up in the constituency, there are concerns about the conduct of some individuals who are still aggrieved over happenings during the party's last parliamentary primaries and are alleged to be moving around the constituency, urging voters to vote against the parliamentary candidate. So we'll, in the next few minutes, um, interact with uh, Faisal Abdul Idris, who is our correspondent uh, in the Volta region. Before we go to him now, okay, so I'm told he has joined us. Faisal, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what exactly is accounting for the concern by the party? Uh, we know that they are asking people to vote skirt and blouse. What exactly are these um, underlying concerns? Yeah, Martin, uh, the campaign activities in the Keta constituency uh, are heating up with both uh, the NDC and the MPP intensifying their campaign. But we are told also that there are some individuals who are also campaigning as independent candidates. Uh, it is imagined now that a number of these persons, including some members of the NDC, are going around the constituency telling people to vote John Mahama and then vote for any other person other than the member of parliament for the area who is the NDC's parliamentary candidate. In the 2020 election, a similar concern emerged. We were told that uh, persons who were found culpable were punished by the party. But it is imagine again that these individuals, even now uh, more in their numbers, are moving around the constituency, campaigning against the MP, who is the NDC's parliamentary candidate, for a number of reasons. Uh, some uh, are linking it to the last 
uh, elementary primaries held by the NDC, persons who are aggrieved for one reason or the other that their candidate did not win the election. Some of these persons are identified to be those who are going around the constituency campaigning against uh, the NDC's parliamentary candidate. The MPP, on the other hand, we are told, are also campaigning skirt and blouse uh, with the notion that John Mahama is likely to win the election. And so they are telling constituents who automatically they believe uh, the constituency is an NDC seat, and so they believe that a large number of the people will be going for the NDC, and so they are urging them to vote for John Mahama, but not to vote for uh, the NDC's candidate, but rather the NDC's candidate. So this is exactly uh, the concern here in Qatar. The party has conducted its internal elections. When elections are over, all those who contested have to come together and then make peace among themselves and then rely, or rely with a winning candidate. So those who intend voting skirt and blouse, to the best of my knowledge, they need to come, the party need to call them, or the regional executive and the council need to meet, call them to order now. You know, Qatar as a whole has a, 90, has a target of 90, 95% for John Ramani Mahama. We are targeting 92% for uh, uh, Honorable uh, Kwame Jolie Gakpa. We need Gakpa's votes to rise from what, uh, what we had in 2020 election for, for the president to, uh, um, to appoint him to any of the state institutions as board chairman or, or board member. It has become a norm for some youths in the party who have engaged themselves in voting skirt and blouse. And been detecting that by the executive committees of the party, we have put up uh, measures in place to deal with anybody who will be found culpable in doing that. And the thing is, this time we need to come on board as all members of the party in order to give the party a resounding victory come 7th December 2024. Therefore, I am entreating every youth in the party to take it upon themselves to work tirelessly for the party, to vote massively for the party. Whoever thinks of engaging himself or herself in voting skirts and blouse will not be spared when caught in the act. So we just want to entreat everybody to vote, vote massively, regardless of whatever differences we have as party members. We should bury those differences and work for the party to come to victory. It's interesting what that last uh, person said, that whoever is caught voting skirt and blouse will not be spared. How will you know in the first place if the person voted skirt and blouse? But we still have a correspondent with us. How about the leadership of the party? What exactly have they been saying regarding this concern of uh, the threat of voting skirt and blouse? Yes, I spoke to the constituent chairman who told me that uh, for them as leadership, they are working hard to unite the party ahead of the December poll. Several reconciliatory meetings were held right after the parliamentary primaries, and that they thought that that would have put to bed the differences. But uh, now that this is emerging, he is stressing the call for uh, unity. Uh, mm -hmm. The last time we met one of the candidates uh, who actually contested the primaries, Dr. Sanano Jokoto, who came up publicly to uh, show his support for the parliamentary candidate and urge anybody who associates with him to support the parliamentary candidate. The same call they are making across board for uh, all other persons who contested the last primary. Then, him pointing to the fact that, of course, they are aware that the MPP, on the other hand, is also campaigning skirt and blood. And so they are urging party members not to fall for that. Let me tell you also that across the voter region, this is a large concern. So when the national chairman of the party uh, told the region this very way that just ended, he spoke about cat and blouse across every constituency that he went, telling the party members that it is even against the party's constitution for anyone to go out of the line to campaign for any other candidate other than the party's parliamentary candidates. Memories, we've been preaching unity, unity. And where we have gotten to, the fact is that we need a united front in order to prosecute this agenda of winning 2024 elections. So we have made this call several times. And today, at the launch of our campaign, we heard the Dr. Senalu Jokutu, the main contender of the incumbent MP, making the same call. So I will also want to add my voice that we have come to a time that we must, as people of the NDC, have one focus. We should all vote properly. There is no skirt and blouse in this matter. We need to vote for 
uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama number eight. And in Qatar, the only MP and the only candidate we are presenting is Honorable Jujoli Gakpe. Nobody should deceive you that vote for this one and vote for that. I want to remind everyone who is the true NDC that the MPP, they are just business people. The candidate at, in Qatar here, they have just, I mean, entered into some agreement with the uh, MPP gurus in Accra. They just want to get some vote in order to get whatever that has been promised them. They don't have at, us at heart, our development, our anything positive is not none of their business. Right, so um, Faisal, how about the member of parliament himself, uh, Honorable Gakpe? How does he feel about all these happenings? Yes, the MP says not really bothered. Uh, he feels uh, the battle on December 7 is the lot. Uh, he has been telling us that over the last four years, since this first term, he's done enough for the people of Qatar to return him to parliament. So he's very confident winning the December 4. Those who are going around doing that, they are not God. God, <laughs> the God I serve will surely deliver me. And what are we looking for is to impact on the society. Basically, it's about politics. Competition is very healthy. So when you go into internal politics, at the end of the day, we all need to come together as one and fight this government, this corrupt government, who is so deliver. So for me, I'm doing my part, and by his grace, I will win. And I will surely win your mama will win in my country. When I'm going through even my achievement, I mean, myself, I was even shocked that I was able to do a lot like this within four years. What are we talking about? There are communities, 13 communities over 200 years. They don't have electricity. But now we are extending electricity to them, and it's a cost sharing project. We do a new school building in RC in Anyaku, as well as Angwa Fiora. When it comes to health, you know, an authority on health that put about 1,000 apprentices program in place. I mean, it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I, I can name and continue naming them. And the individual people we have helped medically, pay their medical bill, we have put over 400 people on scholarship. It's a lot, within four years. My simple message to all is tell a friend to tell a friend that 7th December, everybody should actually go to the pool early and cast their vote because we are doing Operation 95%. That's what we are. We are set in for Keta. And the Keta is a, that's where the end spirit, the spirit of end lives in Keta. So we need to do the need for, to redeem our image as well as to make sure victory is ours. All right, so that will be it uh, for the constituency watch, specifically the Keta constituency. Um, Faisal Abdul Idris is our man who was helping us dissect the constituency properly to get a sense of what's happening there politically uh, now that both parties have launched their campaign, which is in full flight. All right, so we are staying in the camp of the National Democratic Congress because its General Secretary, um, Fifi Fiavikwete, has called on the people of Damongo to ensure the restoration of the NDC by voting out the incumbent Member of Parliament, Samuel Abujinapo, in the upcoming elections. The NDC General Secretary was addressing a mammoth crowd of NDC supporters at Damongo in the Savannah region. In a bit, we'll be speaking to Nadra Mohammed, who is our Savannah Regional Correspondent, to help us understand why uh, this particular call. So, um, Nadi is joining us. Nadi, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on Election 360. First of all, um, why would you think that the NDC General Secretary is asking for people to vote out the incumbent, um, who is uh, the Member of Parliament, Samuel Abujinapo? So good afternoon to you too. Um, what I said, the reason why the secretary is urging the people to vote out uh, the incumbent MP is that, according to uh, what they were saying, there's some um, witnesses. They said the MP goes around the uh, constituency sharing money to people, urging them to vote for them. So in other ways, they claim that the MP is buying votes from the constituency, saying that without the money, then uh, he knows that he wouldn't win the election. Hence, the reason why sharing money around to get uh, people to vote for him. Right, and I'm sure you've also been interacting with some of the constituents. What has their response been? Do they agree totally with the NDC's call for them to vote against the current MP? Yes, they 
Yes, I uh, when I uh, when I spoke to some few few members of the constituency, yes, they indeed said that according to them, for the money, it's a national cake, and then it belongs to everyone. So when the MP brings the money, definitely they will take the money, but they will definitely vote against the MP, citing that the MP has been in power for some time now, and there's no development in Damango, and their their main problem is the Damango Water Project. The people of Damango still struggle to get portable drinking water, even though they have an MP who is well to do. So they said that, okay, the MP is there, you give us the money, we take it, but we definitely vote against you. Because this is the, this is the constituency where um, NDC has uh, members, and they think that Damango and Savannah region in general is a stronghold of the NDC, and therefore, it was a mistake bringing the MPP uh, um, Abu Jinapo on board, and it's time to correct that mistake by voting him out of power and bringing, bringing on uh, Adams Mutokilu to um, continue from where he stops. <laughs> to watch an election 360 the maiden edition and we've just crisscrossed a number of constituencies so the next constituency might just be yours you might want to stay with tv3 which is your election command center let's hit the campaign trail now where the new patriotic party's flag bearer dr mahmoud baumia says his party had demonstrated the ability to resolve major challenges facing the nation and should be given another four-year mandate he told residents of winchi that the npp has demonstrated the ability to implement key policies despite the opposition NDC's pessimism. Yay, ye nimse, ye di ajuin to sua, ye bit me aye. O my penita ran in a party, Nidia. They have the mindset of impossibilities. O more ajuin kajremo se. Um Yentiming Usha Ejuma Yaye since twenty seventeen San Eko Ye Kase Ye the free senior high school education Eba Ghana Deba Lomokaye Omosi Yentimi Ye Omosi Ye Dada Ghana for Omosi it was not possible Enya Ye Kase it is possible. Yaka ya no ya ye. Ya ye. And then, ya di free SHS e baye. If ye wa chini, unkwada baku 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 5.7 million children. And ya free senior high school education. 5.7 million. We munyina anka yetie o mampinyi dada anka yenya free senior high school education. Yaka se yedi free technical and vocational education. 
Sede ebe ma ye kwada mu pese omu suya nsanu ye juma omu ko suya free. Ye kase ye de iba omu kase ye ntimi ye. Omu kase it is not possible. Ye ye kase it is possible. Ye kase no ye ye. Ye ye. Omu kwa teacher training allowance mo. Ye kase ye de baba biyob. Omu kase ye ntimi ye. Yakamuka say it was not possible. Yaka say it is possible. Yaka yano yaye yaye. Nursing training allowance. Yaka say it is possible. Yaye. And so that's the NPP's flag bearer and the current Vice President of the Republic, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia in Wenchi constituency. All right, so let's swing to the other side of the political divide and find out what exactly the former president and the NDC's flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama, has been doing. Now, he is engaging traditional rulers in the Upper West region as he continues his tour of that particular region. The engagement with the regional House of Chiefs is to offer the former president the opportunity to enhance, I beg your pardon, to advance the course of his uh, incoming administration, focusing on social contract he intends to achieve in 120 days. We'll be engaging our correspondent, Kamala Kluche, who is with the former president in the War constituency. And um, let's uh, engage him now. So, Kamala, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on Election 360. To start with, has the engagement between the former president and the chiefs begun? And what are some of the issues that are, are being discussed? Martin, yes, of course. That meeting started about some 45 minutes ago. John Mahama is still... Uh, locked up in there, together with the regional house of chiefs, where we are deliberating over issues. Often, when when set opportunities do come, what he does is to address the chiefs on what the policies and the plans he has for the people of this country are, and he would also offer some suggestions of the sort. The opportunity is also given to the chief to ask questions and also make suggestions that you know would inure to the benefit of not just the NBC, but the entirety of the population of the country. And so that's the format that it takes. But often these issues, where, when they come up, because the chiefs are traditional rulers and also have a lot of jurisdiction or issues that goes around their enclave, they are able to bring to the front banner issues that concern them as a people and also as traditional authorities. And so that engagement is going on in there. But John Mahama has been focusing largely on uh, his social contract with the people. The focus is on 120 days. He says he takes this issue very critically and he is giving the firm assurance that he will not relent on it. What are some of the things that he's been raising? We know already, you know, the, the 25 points that he has in terms of what he intends to do within the 120 days. Let me just mention a few of them to nominate within the first uh, within the first 14 days the complete list of cabinet ministers for parliamentary approval to constitute the leanest and most efficient government under the foreign republic in its first 90 days in office establish a robust code of conduct and standard to all government officials we also know he intends to carry out a lot of investigation the operation recover uh, uh, loot and all that, all are found within the social contract that he intends to have with the people if he secures the mandate of them. And so these are the things that he's been highlighting. But going across the region for the past three days has been one tedious one in terms of uh, road infrastructure. Yes, the Upper West region is a stronghold of the NDC. Stronghold because out of the 11 seats that that uh, the, the, the country has created for the region. The NDC has nine seats and the remaining is for the MPP. And so a lot has been going on. John Mahama has been making the point that for mm. the past eight years, it appears virtually nothing has happened within the region. And that is of much concern to him. And he thinks that the people should rise up and right. kick the MPP out of administration. 
that's uh, actually a very similar call to what the General Secretary has also been making in the Savannah region. So, Kamala, still with us, though, we know that after the, um, the presidential uh, nominations by the Electoral Commission took place, the disqualification happened to have touched the PNC candidate, uh, Bernard Monana. Bernard Monana and his party were very aggrieved that John Mahama or the NDC did not say anything about their disqualification. I'm told that the former president has commented on it. What exactly has he been saying? Of course, yesterday, John Mahama found himself in uh, the hometown of the former head of state, Dr. Hila Liman. That's in... And it was quite obvious that uh, some statements or comments will be made with regards to the party that he said. But John Mahama, John Mahama has been very straightforward on the issue of the balloting. And he disagreed with the Electoral Commission uh, disqualifying the candidature of Bernard Mona, who stood on the ticket of the PNC and says, one, that's unfair, but truly, he thinks that Bernard Mona is more qualified than other people who found themselves on the ballot. Let's listen to what John Mama had to say yesterday in the Cicela East constituency, specifically the location is W. Seen people who were qualified to be on the ballot paper. Unfortunately, our brothers in the PNC uh, were wrongfully disqualified. I do not understand how come the PNC were not allowed to be on this ballot paper. The PNC is a, we a more worthy party than several parties that I see here on the ballot paper. But that's the issue we have with the Electoral Commission. Sometimes they are discriminatory. Because there are some people on this ballot paper who Bernard Mona qualifies more to be here than, than those people. And I know it will provoke controversy, but I mean it. And so um, we are here, NDC. All right, so Kamala Kluche, thank you very much for that report. He is embedded in the campaign of the former president, John Mahama, who is also the NDC's flag bearer, and helping us understand what exactly he has been saying and where his campaign is headed to next. So it, it so happens that it's not just the flag bearers of the party that are campaigning. Their spouses are also on the campaign grounds trying to canvass votes for, you know, their husbands. In this case, we're going to the camp of the NPP. Second Lady Samira Baumia has urged voters in the Ijura Sechodumase constituency in the Ashanti region to reconsider their long-standing support for the NDC and vote for the New Patriotic Party in the coming elections if they want development. Speaking to party members during a health walk and campaign launch in the Ijura, Samia argued, or I beg your pardon, she urged that the opposition party has repeatedly failed to deliver on its promise, despite the overwhelming support that the constituents almost always give to the party, asking them to change their minds now. I'm on your cell, yeah, yeah, because you have a development. I want to hear you in your pussy ever call your tribute. A dress that you do must say, Hard dear. Men and some more crow, and I didn't see a bed snaha. I'm my NDC, I beg her to say, Yeah, dear, yeah, more bra and quay. She get up there. NDC, I did be a so it's interesting that the Ashanti region in its entirety, very few constituencies belong to the NDC or has been won by the NDC. One of them is this particular one, Udras Echedumas, where the second lady currently is. Let's engage Ibrahim Abubakar, our correspondent, who is following this particular issue for us. Ibrahim, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. So what else has the second lady been saying and what has the response been from a typical NDC constituency in the Ashanti region? Well, um, she is um, canvassing for vote there, and for the, this time around, the NPP wants to win that seat. We all know that, like you said, Edra is one of the four seats the NDC is holding firmly here in the Ashanti region. And mind you, in 2012, even though NDC has won it, in 2012, 
the MPP won the seat by around around 400 votes or so. And since 2016, the NDC has taken it back. But this time around, um, clearly you can see that the NPP is investing in terms of resources hugely, just so they will be able to win this seat. But the NDC is not perturbed. In fact, it, it is even looking up to expanding the gap um, so that it will win overwhelmingly in the area. But like you said, Ashanti again, uh, we have most of the political parties currently here campaigning, and Samira too moving from Egra to other constituencies. And this time around, they are just telling the people that if they look at the loyalty that they have um, given to the NDC, and you compare it with their development, it appears uh, when it comes to development, they are lagging behind. So if they really want to see um, significant changes in terms of development, then they will have to vote for Dr. Baumia and also Gifting Doma, who is the um, parliamentary candidate for the NPP in that area. So mm. now both NDC and NPP have intensified their campaign, especially in Nigeria and some selected constituencies. And um, well, and, and, like and, and said, Abraham, so, so yes, the, the, the parties are speaking to the electorates. What are the responses you've gathered from some of the electorates? Are they in tune? Where are they likely to swing in, in terms of voting? Well, this time around, Martin, interestingly, uh, most of the voters say their vote will be based on development. What the people can say to assure them of development. This time around, they are not going strictly or to party line. So if they believe that you have what it takes to bring them the development that they need, then of course they will give you their vote. But of course we know there are others who also vote on party line. But the few that have engaged with at least those who do not belong to party A or party B are saying that this time around they will have to assess um, their current situation who can really and help them when it comes to development so they give, they give their vote to that person. Right, Ibrahim, thank you so much for that update. Ibrahim Abubakar joining us from the Ashanti region, helping us understand what's happening in the Jurassic Chedumasi constituency. This is Election 360. Let's go on to the campaign trail now and also find out what's happening in the camp of Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman, who is the NDC's um, running mate. And she is on a week-long campaign tour in the Ahafu. Bono and Northeast regions. She has been meeting with chiefs and opinion leaders and some party supporters to outline the NDC's vision going into the December polls and rallying support for the NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama and its parliamentary candidate. Evelyn Tengma is our reporter who's been on the trail of the, um, the NDC's running mate and uh, has joined us. Evelyn, good, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us on Election 360. To start with, Tell us where the NDC's uh, running mate has been uh, so far. Trump is currently in the Ahafu region, and first of all, she visited the Nogbeko community in the Isunapo South constituency, where she met the chiefs and opinion leaders there. Now, and later she addressed a gathering in the community. Now, the chiefs uh, mentioned that there have been some abandoned projects, um, such as roads, school infrastructure, hospital infrastructure, among others, and that she, they appeal to Prof that when the NDC is voted to power, they should um, try as much as possible to address some of these issues for them. Now, Prof and the MP for Isnafo South, um, Eric Opoku, have also been addressing the gathering, and of course, they're basically asking um, the community members to vote massively for the NDC and uh, the NDC flag bearer, and their parliamentary candidates as well, so that... Right, right. So, so yeah, so Evelyn, clearly we know that uh, it's going to be a very busy day where you are. Uh, also tell us about the message and the reception from the electorate, the, the gathering there. Both are still in the Ahafu region, and to be specific, the are so midwifery and nursing training school, uh, where she has been addressing the students here. And of course, it has to do with education. Now, what she is basically saying is that the MPP government has messed up the education sector. And so 
She is saying that when the NDC comes to power, they will try to reset the whole education sector and make it better. Now, she also addressed issues of um, allowances and uh, that the students complained that the allowances have not been forthcoming for months. And so uh, she promised that when the NDC comes to power, they will try as much as possible to address some of these issues for them. And so she's asking that they vote massively for the NDC to come to power. So from here, um, Prof will go into other constituencies in the region. And then after that, she will go to the Bono region and to the Bono East region for her one week campaign tour in these regions. <laughs> Right, thank you, Evelyn, for that report. She is on the campaign trail with the NDC's running mate in the Bono. Bono East and a half regions. So we'll try and bring you all the reports so far as it has to do with politics and elections. Trust your reliable source for a comprehensive coverage of the 2024 elections. This has been the maiden edition of Election 360. That's it for today. We're back tomorrow. We are your safest bet for election coverage. Right. Up next, though, after this is News Central. Do have a good afternoon.